you like NECA wafers, the original candy wafer, yeah, that's a category that really took off, there's no need to watch this video. You're going to get screwed no matter what. I'm going to begin tonight with um, a little shout out to Kevin Blanche. He just put out a video, um, some pretty powerful stuff there, brother. As a fellow artist, uh, I do agree. Um, these videos are becoming more about history uh, than actual current events because um, it just, no matter what we say or do, you know, the, the, the insanity continues. It just continues. The operators of Japan's power plants are bracing themselves for a new set of rules. Nuclear Regulation Authority officials have drafted new safety standards for protecting their reactors from earthquakes and tsunami. An expert panel within the authority finalized the guidelines they'll be passed into law by July. The new regulations will define active faults as formations that moved in the past 120,000 to 130,000 years but that could be extended to 400,000 years ago if faults are hard to identify. The guidelines will force plant operators to prepare for the highest possible tsunami for all of the reactors. The operators will have to implement safety measures like seawalls to protect the plants from tsunami and minimize flooding. Researchers in northeastern Japan are giving health checks to hundreds of young people from a town near Fukushima Daiichi. They're trying to estimate how much radiation the residents were exposed to in the early days after the 2011 accident at the nuclear plant. The checkups are happening inside this building. The people getting examined don't want their identities to be revealed. They're from Namiya. Many residents went to areas northwest of the town after the accident without knowing radiation levels there were high. They convince municipal officials to offer tests for people who were 18 years or younger at the time. Around 850 children, or about a quarter of those eligible, want to be examined. The researchers will collect blood to look for changes in chromosomes. We will do our best to notify the examinees of the results as soon as possible to relieve their concerns. To relieve their concerns. to release their concerns. Japanese leaders have faced more than a year of questions and criticism for how they responded to the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. New revelations about what happened in the hours and days after the March 11, 2011 disaster will likely fan the flames. NHK has learned government officials had data on the spread of radiation from the nuclear plant. And they knew that data, which was gathered by a system known as Speedy, was reliable. But they deliberately withheld it to avoid sparking panic, even though the media repeatedly asked for the information. NHK obtained a draft report from the Science and Technology Ministry on what happened after the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. 
The document says on March 15th, four days after the accident, Ministry officials used Speedy to identify high levels of radiation in Namie. The town is about 20 kilometers northwest of the plant. The officials reported the findings to the Prime Minister's office that day. They also combined some of the Speedy data with other radiation readings and released the information to the media. But there were doubts about the accuracy of the results. The ministry finally decided to divulge the complete speedy data at the end of April, more than a month after the nuclear accident. Officials argued they withheld the full results because the findings were based on predictions and releasing them could have caused panic. After they actually took radiation readings, they found that the levels were high, so officials can't really say Speedy is unreliable and inaccurate. The system is there for the Japanese people to help residents avoid radiation exposure, so the verification is insufficient from the perspective of the Japanese people and residents. I'm surprised the government did not fulfill its obligations. It is very regrettable and frustrating. The head of the government panel investigating the Fukushima accident says if officials had released the speedy data and explained its reliability, people in Namie could have used the information to come up with an evacuation plan. Instead, they stayed in the town and were exposed to radiation for a month. Researchers in northeastern Japan are giving health checks to hundreds of young people from a town near Fukushima Daiichi. They're trying to estimate how much radiation the residents were exposed to in the early days after the 2011 accident at the nuclear plant. We will do our best to notify the examinees of the results as soon as possible to relieve their concerns. to relieve their concerns. To relieve their concerns. Now, here's the finance minister, Taro Asso. Remember, everybody's an Asso. Who can forget Taro Asso? <laughs> the biggest Asso in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an Asso that Asso is. <laughs> well, he's in this headline. Let elderly people Quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Aso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. So he was doing the rounds, selling people on this new budget they have you know, for the new government. Heaven forbid, he said, if you are forced to live on when you want to die, I would wake up feeling increasingly bad knowing the treatment was all being paid for by the government. The problem won't be solved unless you let them hurry up and die. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Mrs. Watanabe. This, some fellow finance minister in Japan named Aso wants you to kill yourself for the benefit of his paper-pushing bankster buddies down there at the Bank of Japan. We will do our best to notify the examinees of the results as soon as possible to relieve their concerns. That's not right, is it? What are you going to do about it? How about some, uh, some... You know what? They got that special sushi in Japan made out of the blowfish. <laughs> yeah. If you eat too much of it, it kills you. How about Mrs. Watanami goes down to this asshole's office and serves him a nice luncheon of deadly sushi? How'd you like that, asshole? Japan's National Police Agency plans to beef up security at nuclear power plants in case of terrorist attacks. The agency is requesting nearly $20 million for the next fiscal year. This is almost four times the budget for the current fiscal year that ends in March. The funds would be used to buy more machine guns and bulletproof vehicles. Police officers are stationed at nuclear facilities nationwide and guard them around the clock. The agency will also buy shields and other equipment for officers patrolling remote islands. This includes the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. The agency says officers will be able to protect themselves if attacked by foreigners who enter Japanese waters illegally.
U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has urged North Korea to give up on the idea of conducting another nuclear test. She made the appeal during a question and answer session with citizens and reporters around the world. She'll leave office on Friday. Clinton said she has been watching how Kim Jong-un has developed as a leader. We expected him to focus on improving the lives of the North Korean people, not just the elite, but everyone to have more education, more openness, more opportunity. Uh, and instead, he has engaged in very provocative um, rhetoric and behavior. Clinton said U.S. officials will work together with their allies to try to change that behavior. She underscored the importance of North Korea's closest ally. We want to see uh, a rising power like China uh, join the international community as a responsible uh, stakeholder, um, continue its uh, extraordinary efforts to lift uh, hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, create a strong, vital middle class, um, have respectful relations with its neighbors uh, in uh, all of the ways on land and sea that that uh, is required. The U.S. Senate has approved John Kerry to replace Clinton as Secretary of State.